Hello and welcome to Breaking Down, the series where we take an in-depth look at a Fire Emblem unit from a gameplay perspective. Today we will be looking at the adopted daughter of Margrave Edmund, Marianne. Before we start, I would like to thank the people who have backed the channel on Patreon, where for just £1 a month, you can see the units that will be in this season of Breaking Down, as well as vote on the next unit from that list to be released. More on this at the end. Whilst this series is not focused around plot, there is always a chance for spoilers, and certain elements of the game and its structure and story will inevitably be mentioned, so if that is a concern for you, feel free to give it a miss. Also, where relevant, this is considering the maddening difficulty on a regular new game file with no exploits or excessive grinding. Marianne is a member of the Golden Deer, so should they be the house you choose, you will have her from the get-go. In any other case, she will need to be recruited. Like with most students, this can be done by raising her support rank with Byleth to a B, at which point she can request to join your class on any day after this. Alternatively, Marianne's recruit requirements are in Magic and Riding, which vary based on her support level with Byleth and are shown on screen now. In general, Byleth probably won't be raising Riding too much, so it's usually easier to just get the B support. Marianne's personal ability is Animal Friend, which restores 20% of her HP at the start of her turn when she is adjacent to a mounted or flying ally. No need to beat around the bush on this one, it isn't particularly great. Marianne is not exactly a frontline tank, so even if she is able to survive a hit, you probably aren't looking for her to tank more after that. 20% is also just quite a small heal, since anything she does survive will likely leave her on very low health, and overall, healing herself just isn't in line with what she wants to do, not to mention that she needs to be next to a mounted ally to do so, which means that until units hit level 10, she literally has no personal ability. Even if you remove the conditional and just made it a 20% heal at the start of her turn, it would still be bad, so with the condition in place, it really is unfortunate that she's stuck with this. Marianne does have a crest, which is a minor crest of the beast. This gives a 20% chance to increase might by 5 when using a weapon, and the first thing to note is that it does not affect combat arts. With this in mind, Marianne will likely not make too much use of this. There is the occasional moment where she may make use of a bow, particularly very early on when spellcasts are limited, or she may counterattack after using a combat art on the player phase, or she could make use of magical weaponry, but other than that, it will be very low impact. It does also allow her to use relic weapons and equipment without taking additional damage. The Crest of the Beast also has one additional benefit, which is only active when using the relic weapon associated with it, Blutgarn. This is obtained by completing Marianne's Paralogue, and if used with her, as she is the only playable character who bears the Crest, she can use the combat art Beast Fang, which adds 10 Might, 30 Crit, and deals bonus damage to Cavalry and Dragon units, it's a very high damage attack, especially against those effective targets, so it's never a bad thing to have access to. From a statistical perspective, Marianne is relatively run of the mill for a mage. 11 magic is a solid starting point, and with a 50% growth rate it will grow with a solid consistency. She also has a reasonable resistance stat with a decent growth, allowing her to eat magical hits fairly well. Charm and speed are also passable, nothing outstanding, but not a huge hindrance either. On the other hand, she struggles with HP, defense, and strength. The former two leave her quite susceptible to physical attacks, and the latter can cost her speed from struggling to offset weapon weight. As far as skills go, Marianne has a great spread. She comes with boons in swords, faith, riding, and flying, banes in brawling and heavy armor, and a budding talent in lances. The first thing to pick up on here are the banes. Brawling and heavy armor are in no way desirable areas for Marianne, so the deficits here really do not matter at all. This means that whatever she wants to go into, she will likely never have to struggle through a bane. However, whilst the area doesn't see an active hindrance, one thing that is a little disappointing is the lack of a reason boon, since she will want to bump this up, firstly to make use of reason-based classes, and secondly to access this half of her spell list, since there's no real reason to keep it locked behind closed doors. That being said, it still isn't too much of a chore to raise it, but a boon would obviously make it quicker and require less investment. With Marianne being a magic-oriented unit, her spell list will obviously be quite important. As far as her reason spells go, the most notable is Thorin, available at the C rank. This is a spell which has 1-3 to three range, allowing her to chunk out enemies from a greater distance than most, giving her not only additional safety, but also more flexibility in where you are able to attack from. This is very nice and is always going to be a useful tool to have in your arsenal. As for the rest of Marianne's reason spells, they aren't really anything to write home about. Cutting Gale is very accurate, which is always nice, and Thimble Vetra packs a decent amount of might and a lot of crit, but neither are showstoppers, just reasonable spells for a mage to have. 
Moving over to her faith list, Physic at the C rank is always going to be appreciated, because this means that when combined with her D base and boon, it is attainable for chapter 2. In general, it also just provides a nice safety net, allowing you to heal your allies from a great distance. Silence is a very situational spell. This stops a target from being able to use magic for one turn, and can be highly valuable in the right scenario, completely nullifying an enemy mage and allowing them to basically be a non-factor for a turn. The situations where opportunities for this to be used may not be incredibly frequent, but when it does come in clutch it is a great tool for her to have access to. Her final faith spell, Aura, is similar to Fimble Vetra, just a decently punchy spell with some nice crit backing it up. It's nothing special really and unlikely to be too pivotal to Marianne. Overall, Marianne's spell list does provide her with a lot of solid options, with things like Foreign, Silence and Physic, but it does miss that one big defining spell to tie it all together. It's a nice supporting cast of spells, but lacking something to really make it stand out as the game progresses, and things like Rescue and Warp become available to other units. It definitely isn't bad though, and provides some nice utility to Marianne. The two movement ability boons in Riding and Flying are actually very nice for Marianne. They obviously make it much easier to reach some of the mounted classes, which can always be very desirable, but the big draw is that by having the pair together, Marianne can have some really strong class flexibility as the game progresses, and let her reach basically any option she would really desire, or multiple options which she can alternate between depending on the situation. The final boon in Swords is okay, it can be useful for some qualifications, but by and large it won't contribute a massive amount. The one tool it does give that is really nice is Soul Blade at C+. This is a magical combat art, meaning her attacks that use this make use of her magic stat rather than her strength. It also gives plus 2 might, as well as adding 30% of her resistance to the damage. All in all, this can be a very nice thing to have access to, and the sword boon definitely isn't useless. The only issue with Soul Blade is that, well, it's sort of outclassed by something you can get access to earlier, and that comes from that budding talent in Lancers. Once mastered by tutoring Marianne in the area 12 times, you gain access to Frozen Lance. Once again, this is a magical combat art, and this gives 3 damage, 5 hit, and adds 30% of the user's dexterity as damage. Lances have solid might throughout the game, and Marianne's dex is solid enough for it to contribute decently to this. There are also a good number of unique lances that Marianne may be able to lay claim to if they are available, and also other options for select enemies, like Horse Slayers or the Blessed Lance. For both of the magic combat arts, being able to make use of the might of weapons whilst also hitting on the enemy's resistance, which for the majority is lower than their defense, and also getting the benefits provided by the combat arts themselves, gives the user an extremely appreciated damage spike. Frozen Lance scaling off of dex is also handy, since raising dex now gives additional damage and accuracy, so things like dex cooking boosts or stat boosters make you more accurate and more powerful. All in all, Frozen Lance is a premier combat art. Since it comes from a budding talent, it is available incredibly early. So, let's get into using Marianne from a gameplay perspective. If you are using the Golden Deer, she makes a valid case to be deployed on Chapter 1, mainly because of her innate access to heal. Heals aren't exactly something that you desperately need on this chapter, it's relatively slow paced and you have a large amount of vulneraries, but they can be useful to an extent. More importantly, heals give Marianne the opportunity to gain additional EXP without requiring hits or kills, increasing how much you can actually get out of the level. Nosferatu does also hold some relevance, being able to chunk out some of the bulkier enemies, especially Dadu, and provide an uncounterable attack against most opponents, since the spells are 1 to 2 range. The main reason you care about getting XP into Marianne is to allow her to reach level 5 as quickly as possible, in order to qualify for Monk and shrug off the half spellcast debuff that she suffers whilst in Noble. Leading up to Chapter 2, your primary aim is to get Physic by pushing Marianne to see Faith. The additional Faith gained from using her on Chapter 1 and the Forced Orcs battle will help here, should you choose to do so. Once again, whilst Physic is helpful on the chapter itself, allowing Marianne to heal from a distance, the main benefit is that it simply gives her more things to do with which to gain XP, since it is three additional spellcasts. You want to preferably try to get Marianne to level 5 by the end of Chapter 2 if possible, so that you can class her into Monk. The beginner class's requirements are met at base, so you don't need to worry about doing anything to certify for this. Monk is the only class at this stage which can use magic, so it's an easy choice to make use of this. When mastered, Monk gives the self-explanatory ability Magic plus 2, which is obviously very beneficial, as well as the positional combat art Draw Back, which moves Marianne and an adjacent ally back one space each, a useful tool which will likely see a lot of use throughout the game. Following Chapter 2, there are three tutoring weeks before the Chapter 3 mission. 
This is a very ideal time to master Marianne's budding talent and acquire Frozen Lance for a huge damage spike. This makes her a very strong combat unit at this point in time, whilst also still letting her take advantage of her spell list for ranged damage or her healing utility. At this point, Marianne becomes a legitimate damage threat. Frozen Lance provides massive damage by allowing her to use a weapon alongside her magic stat, and also the bump that Dexterity gives. Hitting on the enemy's resistance will allow her to outdamage a lot of her physically attacking teammates, simply because this is usually a lot lower than the enemy's defense. Maximizing the use of this early on will give your team a very viable threat, so keeping her stocked up with a range of lances is highly recommended. Getting Marianne up to D authority early on is also a nice benchmark, as this is the requirement for the magic boosting battalions in the early game. One thing that can help with this is giving her one of the early battalions prior to chapter 2, although with in-house units like Byleth, Claude, Lorenz and Lysithia, these are up for some very stiff competition. I don't think this is as high priority as the other tools mentioned thus far, but it is still something to keep in mind. The intermediate class that Marianne is the most eager to reach is the Mage class, which requires C Reason. Whilst this can be gambled lower, I think it's worth pushing up to the C benchmark fairly quickly anyway, since this grants access to Foreign. The big benefit of this is its 1-3 to three range, allowing Marianne some additional safety and granting her some more opportunities to chip away at enemies. As for Mage itself, you are able to use spells whilst in the class and it also gives an additional point of magic. Alongside this, it gives access to the Fire spell whilst you are here. This is very light and also very accurate, making it a desirable option as far as her early spells go. The biggest benefit of Mage, however, is its mastery ability, Fiendish Blow. This grants an additional 6 magic damage when the user initiates combat, which is obviously a very nice power spike. This also works for things like Frozen Lance, increasing its value even further. The intermediate stage is also where we start to feel the effect of one of the more interesting aspects of Marianne, which is how beneficial it can be to bounce between classes from one map to the next. She is a highly flexible unit, thanks to her solid spell utility and great damage output with Frozen Lance, so which of these you want to take advantage of the most can vary from map to map. For example, should you wish to prioritize her player phase kill potential at an intermediate level, you can sacrifice her spell list and class over to Cavalier or Pegasus Knight. Cavalier requires D riding and C lances, something which is easily met thanks to Marianne possessing boons in both areas. The big benefit of this is the class having 7 move and canto, which makes closing the gap to hit a frozen lance much easier, as well as having the ability to back out afterwards. Pegasus Knight is very similar, again requiring C lances, but this time with D flying. However, it only has 6 move alongside Kanto. In exchange for that point of move, it brings flight to the table. Whilst you cannot use spells here, they massively amp up her kill potential, since she can reach the target she needs to kill much easier. Which one of these you prefer can depend on your later pathing, but either one will be a very valuable class in many situations. The point of these isn't to use them permanently, but to identify when you may need access to her spell list, or when you can lean more into her kill potential, and pick your class accordingly. Another one of Marianne's tools that leans into this is Silence, which becomes available at B Faith. This can be a very useful tool for dealing with mages, since it stops them attacking for a turn, but on maps where there are not many of these, or they aren't very threatening, it obviously loses a lot of its use. Whilst Marianne will want to master mage, the flexibility to jump into other classes is a huge asset that she will absolutely want to take advantage of. If you do go down riding, it's also worth grabbing dex plus 4 at the C rank. This is essentially 4 points of hit, 2 points of crit, and when using Frozen Lance, at least 1 point of damage. Nothing extraordinary, but it's a reasonable boost in hit and damage in an area where there is already merit to go into, for not too much investment either. Marianne could also consider hit plus 20 from Archer, but I don't feel this is too necessary, especially considering some of the options that become available later. When she reaches level 20, Marianne really starts to shine as a unit, thanks again to that flexibility. This is a really weird one, because whilst I would usually cover a build path leading towards a final class, I think having any distinct final Marianne class is selling her massively short, and will always lead to her missing out on her fullest potential, because what she wants to do from one map to the next will vary quite a lot. The easiest way to separate her classes at this point are her damage focused classes, which are generally the ones that give Lance Fair and 8 move, and her utility focused classes, which allow for access to her spell list. There are a couple of ways you can look at this, but there are 4 classes in general that I would say are highly valuable here. These are Valkyrie, Dark Flyer and Paladin, available at level 20, and Falconite, available at level 30. Valkyrie requires B Reason and B Riding, and whilst Reason is not a boon area, it still won't take too long to reach this benchmark, especially since it will already be at C. This is a mounted class which gives access to magic, canto, and 6 move, 
the lowest of the others I have mentioned. However, to compensate, it gives her additional range to her black magic attacks. Despite lacking a fair skill, it does come with a plus 4 magic modifier, giving a sizeable damage boost to any hit, regardless of whether that's with spells or frozen lance. Another advantage of this is that when mastered, it grants uncanny blow, an ability which increases hit by 30 when the user initiates combat, a benefit which is very helpful and gives further reason to use the class. Dark Flyer requires B plus reason and C flying, and once again the reason requirement isn't too difficult to hit despite lacking a boon. This is a flying class, once again giving spell access, along with Kanto and 7 move. On top of having very good mobility, the class also comes loaded with Black Tome Fair, increasing the damage of her black magic spells by 5, although the class does not give any inherent magic modifier, so doesn't benefit Frozen Lance in any way from a damage point of view. Paladin has requirements of B lances and B riding, and most importantly does not come with access to spells. What it does bring is 8 move, Kanto and Lance Fair. The movement allows Marianne to be extremely mobile, whilst Lancefair provides a very appreciated damage spike when using Frozen Lance, giving it a boost of 5. This class is very much oriented around Marianne being a killbot, letting her eat through enemies who stack defense by hitting on their much lower resistance. The final class is Falconite, which is the only master class of the bunch, meaning it isn't available until level 30. It requires A Lancers, B plus Flying, and C Swords, and for this you get 8 Move, Kanto, and Lancefair, similarly to Paladin, However, it also comes with Flight. Once again, this does not bring spell access, but in terms of mobility it really is elite, allowing her the best opportunities to make use of Frozen Lance, and with Lance Fair backing it up for massive damage. Four classes might sound like a ton of investment, but surprisingly it isn't. You can get into all of these guaranteed with A Lances, B Plus Flying, B Plus Reason, B Riding, and C Swords, with four of those being boon areas. Until Falconite at level 30, the other three only require B Lances, B Riding, B Plus Reason, and C Flying. This really isn't that much, especially for the flexibility that it brings to the table. Of course, these certifications can also be gambled with lower requirements, should you wish to save on this further. With regards to the Grounded classes, Battalions are a really important thing to bear in mind. There is only one flying magical battalion, the New Valflyer Corps which may lead to this being quite highly contested, so even when Falconite is an option, Paladin still holds some relevance. The same goes with Valkyrie and Darkflyer. They can also make use of grounded adjutants should you wish to do so. I honestly think that this gives Marianne her best endgame. You don't really want her settled in a class, but instead alternating between a few core options to provide what you need the most at the time. Falconite and Darkflyer do come away as the two premier for damage and utility respectively, but there is a lot of merit to Paladin and Valkyrie too, and Paladin plays an important role prior to level 30 when Falconite is not an option. As for what else Marianne may want, continuing to raise Reason and Faith to access all the areas of her spell list is a nice option, as well as Lancers for the higher ranks of Lance Prowess. It's also worth pushing up her authority to allow her to access higher rank battalions that provide sizeable boosts in damage and accuracy, there is also some merit to raising her swords to C+, in order to access Soul Blade. Frozen Lance will usually be better, but she can make use of some of the better swords, since these are usually relatively uncontested, including things like the Rapier, the Devil Sword, or the Sword of Zoltan. One other thing that may be worth consideration, especially when utilising Paladin and Falconite, is using magical weaponry like a Levin Sword to give her a range option. Should you upgrade this to a Levin Sword Plus, its range becomes 1 to 3, which means she still has a ranged option even when she loses her spell list, and a 3 ranged one at that. If you choose to raise bows all the way up to B, you have a similar option with a Magic Bow, which would also give some bonus damage against flying enemies. Past here, Marianne is basically in her endgame. The skills you will want to equip on her will likely change depending on the class she is in. I think it's worth mentioning a couple of the other classes that could be considered as options, but that I personally don't think are worth it. I'll kick this off by mentioning Priest, an intermediate class which requires Sea Faith to guarantee this qualification, something which Marianne will probably already have as of Chapter 2. This can be worth looking at as an alternative to Mage once you acquire Fiendish Blow, since its white magic heals plus 5 will give you an advantage in this area. There is some validity to this, but personally I prefer having access to Fire from Mage, due to its accuracy, and the additional point of magic from being in the class is nice too, but if you do choose to go Priest it is a valid option, just one that I personally do not prefer. Another set of classes that may be considered are Bishop and Warlock at the advanced stage, the tiers respective Faith and Reason class. Ultimately, the biggest issue with both of these is the same, and that is their incredibly restrictive 4 move. When options like Darkflyer and Valkyrie are available, I just think the advantages that these give, such as double casts of the respective magic type for each, 
Black Tome Fair from Warlock, and additional healing from Bishop are just not worth the cost, at least on Mary Ann. The last class to discuss here is Dark Knight, which is a weird one because you should absolutely class into this. You will hit the requirements anyway, at least to an extent where you can gamble the promotion, those being C Lancers, B plus Reason, and A Riding. And having it as an option is never going to be a bad thing. All it will cost is a Master Seal. I just don't really think you ever actually want to use it. It's just caught in an awkward spot as a middle ground between the other classes. Marianne is a bit of an odd unit because I think her best endgame option is to simply not settle in a class and switch around frequently based on what she needs, as opposed to many other units who will have multiple routes and switching between them would be very high investment. Of course, if you did want a lower investment choice, you're free to just pick one or two of these, maybe both riding or both flying classes for example. I think this about wraps up Marianne, a unit with a ton of flexibility and a lot of unexpected damage potential. I hope this helps you to get the most out of her. I would once again like to thank the people who have backed the channel on Patreon, the support is greatly appreciated. When this goes live, the poll on there for the next unit to be released will have just 24 hours remaining on it, so if you do want to get involved and have your say, you still can do so for just £1 a month, a link is in the description. If you want to discuss the video, the channel, or Fire Emblem in general, consider joining the Discord. Thank you very much for watching.